Hi everyone. I'm just waiting to uh, to leave. As I keep mentioning, I'm going away for a couple of days. And I thought I would make a video. I actually recorded one last night before I jumped in the hot tub and I wasn't happy with it. So this is going to be a bit of an attempt to reorganize those thoughts. And to mention a couple of things from the, the video that I recorded, a 26 some odd minute video that I just recorded and uploaded, there are several things in there I say that are uh, not exactly what I meant. Uh, at one point I talked about childhood adverse experience affecting us in adulthood and it, you know the degree to which it affects us in adulthood is going to you know be somewhat relative to the degree in which a person processes that trauma and is aware of it through self-knowledge and other things and, and dealing with the anger that you might have and I said something along the lines that you know to the degree to which you do that would be to the degree to which you'd be sort of considered healthy and that's not really what I meant healthy I mean who among us is healthy anyway um, what I meant is you know that would be to the degree to which it would actually impact you on a day-to-day -day basis right through dysfunction like it you know uh, low self-esteem or acting out in some ways or having addictions or that sort of thing and hopefully that came across but um, the other thing that I wanted to kind of clarify just a little bit I mentioned in that video that I have respect for people who stand for what they, you know, deem to be virtuous. And and I do have respect for that. That's not to say I have automatic respect for what they declare as virtue. And when I said we could argue about the finer points, I really meant we could argue about the coarse points, you know, the, the, the grand points, the the first principles, the, the reasoning behind the virtue. And I think if logic and rationality are are to be held in any kind of esteem at all, then we should be able to and we haven't yet come to some sort of a, a, a conclusion. I think right now we're at an impasse, but you know, my goal is to see logic and rationality win the day, obviously. And that I recognize there are some things in scripture that are not all that humanistic, but I think some of the scriptures that would direct a Christian on how to behave towards other Christians and towards unbelievers are are virtuous and peaceful and and uh, considerate and kind and that sort of thing and so we have some agreement there and i still say to raw 5069 i don't see any virtue in laughing at the potential demise of another person through your worldview or mine and so i will leave that to you to work out with yourself the thing that i w wanted to talk about that i was that i made a video on last night is on the subject of redemption and I'm really at a loss for words in some ways to describe the feeling that I have within me when I see people wanting to throw throw away um, someone like Rand Campbell and other you know other YouTube people on on either side of this great debate I've always believed in redemption and I, I upload, I made a video once and I don't remember if I uploaded it, but I was talking about uh, animal rescues and, I, and I'm, you know, I, I contribute to charities that do animal rescues and it's amazing to watch some of the videos of these truly, true stories of redemption. You know, they will, they will come upon this matted up fur, flea bitten, um, festering wound you know maggots right in the right in the skin uh, dog on a street that's skittish and scared and ready to lash out at anyone who comes close and within a few weeks the dog is uh, licking their faces and playing and joyful and and it's just it, it's such a powerful visual to see that and to see the hearts of the people who are willing to do that to see what what that animal looks like at the beginning and it just looks like a lost cause and it behaves like a lost cause and you would just think well why why would you waste your energy and effort on that that animal he's done i mean just euthanize him you know that's not of course that's not me talking because i i wouldn't want to do that but to see the transformations and to see the redemption in these animals and just to see the people I, I think are true heroes who do this. It really amazes me. And then to see what happens on YouTube and on the internet when someone's behaving in a way that other people disagree with, 
and they're just ready to throw them away. Now, that's not to say that I think everybody deserves sort of like endless opportunity, endless chances. I mean, the onus is on all of us to behave in a way so as to be, you know, acceptable by everyone, right? Everyone in a relationship has a share of responsibility for maintaining that relationship. But I think if we recognize that a lot of social dysfunction and, and, you know, abrasive behavior in people, a lot of times comes from dysfunction. Sometimes it's dysfunction they're not even aware of. A lot of it, again, is rooted, I believe, in childhood trauma and adverse experience. And if we recognize that, then who, who are we to really just be the next, the next person who, who denies humanity to that person? Right. That's this is a result of having their humanity denied them for many years. And then we're just the next in line. So someone had commented on one of my Rancam videos. Um, you know, this guy doesn't deserve any second chances. He's a he's a low life degenerate and maybe even worse than that. And it's like, I can't go there. <laughs> And again, that's not to say that I'm going to be a doormat. I'm not going to give someone endless opportunities. At some point, I'm going to disengage and and uh, hope that my words to that point have had some kind of an effect. But ultimately, I can't control anybody else. All I can do is is be human and extend that and hope that, that people will respond and, and take that olive branch, uh, if you will. And I, I find it very similar on the Christian side. I, I made a comment about the Palestinian and Israeli conflict in one of my videos recently where I was talking about them using the uh, Hamas using women and children as human shields. And I had seen a comment made by a Christian on Google Plus a while back. And I almost made a video on it, but I was, you know, I didn't. And the comment was, drive them into Egypt. You know, this is your land, something like that, something to that effect. And I was, you know, I was quite horrified by that comment. I mean, you know, how fucking convenient, right, from your safe little spot probably in the USA with no thought for, you know, all the countless innocent women and children who are going to be displaced and what that means for them. I mean, that's horrific. You know, no thought for what it must be like to have leaflets raining from the sky telling you to get out of your neighborhood because you're about to be fucking bombed out, right? This is your home. This is all you've ever known. No thought for that at all. Not No thought for the people that will die just as a result of that kind of displacement, right? I mean, when you make that many people move forcibly, you know, from their homes, stuff happens. People die. People get ill. People are never the same. Not to mention, obviously, all the the incredible emotional trauma. What a heartless comment. But I, I, I had sort of imagined in my mind, I do this sometimes, I argue with people in my head. That's not a sign of anything, is it? <laughs> I, I, you know, I'll go through scenarios in my head with, with the person that, that made the comment. And um, I likened it to this redemption of, of animals. And I thought, you know, how can you say that about these people? How can you say that they deserve to be uprooted from their homes? And of course, I recognize that this is all based on, you know, 2,000 plus year old texts that basically call this a promised land and that these people are, I don't know what they are. They've lived there all their lives, but they're squatters somehow. And that they're they're unredeemable. And in my mind, this discussion went to the genocides of the Old Testament. And you know, in 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 instances where the deity has uh, commanded, you know, the complete wipeout of entire tribes of people, you know, don't leave anybody standing, et cetera, et cetera. I guess you can take some of the virgins for yourselves if you like. And how, and I've heard this argument made and how that was necessary because they were all evil. They were all cursed. And, and even the, the children in the womb, um, they were better off to be slaughtered than to, to grow up to be these cursed, evil human beings. And, and I just think how how backwards is that, that this doctrine of redemption, I mean, that's, you know, that's what Christianity really is, is this doctrine of salvation, doctrine of redemption, uh, and this omnipotent deity couldn't intervene in the hearts of these people and redeem them. 
give them that opportunity, much in the way that these animal rescuers give these dogs an opportunity to be who they really are through some compassion and some love and a little bit of a little bit of redemption and I'm eternal optimist when it comes to humanity somebody had said on one of my videos recently wow you sure got a lot of um, optimism for the online community well I think I have optimism for humanity in general I, I don't like the idea of the alternative to that but it does it does weaken at times my optimism it weakens when I do see people so willing to very just quickly just throw someone out to discard them and I wish sometimes that people would take a moment to just consider what that might be like on the receiving end what that might be like if they were on the other end of that and uh, everybody was just so quick to toss them to the trash heap especially considering what I believe you know sort of the roots of some of this this dysfunction is this dysfunction that is antisocial behavior and uh, lack of empathy and a willing to lash out and of course quite interestingly a lot of times the people who are who are willing to toss another person out to the trash heap they're quite often doing the same thing <laughs> that the person that they would have thrown out is doing being in, you know inconsiderate and abrasive and and using abusive language and that sort of thing Mir Christian Logos had posted a comment on one of my comments something about you know compassion being in short order here on YouTube and and something to that effect but we can control that right we can change that we set the example I don't want to turn this into a rant so I'm not going to but we set the example here we we are YouTube and I think the more you set that example of, of reaching out in compassion and again you don't you don't have to be a doormat you don't let people get away with shit I mean I think I've shown in my time here on YouTube I'll call bullshit when I see bullshit you don't let people get away with stuff in a serial fashion you give them some opportunities and then you, you, you do the tough love thing you give you do the intervention thing you say listen we can't have we can't have a relationship when you're gonna behave like that and I think the more that we do that and the more that we hold ourselves to a higher standard when we approach other people it's gonna become more and more uh, uncomfortable for people to behave the other way because it's gonna be not the norm and it's gonna be pretty clear that it's not accepted and it's not acceptable and I think that's the only way to to deal with the online anonymous flame wars and things like that is to is to really set an example and to hold yourself to a higher standard and to disengage with people who are unwilling to rise to that level and and let them twist slowly in the breeze and and figure it out ultimately the onus is on them to figure that out but we we are YouTube we set that example and I really think it's up to us to to do that doesn't mean being a doormat but I'd like to see a little bit more humanity here on YouTube that's enough preaching from me I'm gonna get the heck out of here I got a few things to do before I jump on an airplane so I will see you all some other time thanks as always for watching